Hi, I'm Bob Jonkman. Uh, I'm a member of the Green Party of Canada. I actually ran for election um, in 2015 for uh, Kitchener-Conestoga. And conveniently to mesh with uh, today's theme of our home on native land, the Green Party had a special general meeting back in December where uh, they passed five resolutions on indigenous issues. So I would like to just go through those, uh, those policies that were passed. The, the resolutions were passed and are now part of the Green Party policy. So to, uh, to start with, we'll just go over some of the uh, philosophies of the Green Party. The Green Party wants to come up with a, a government that is transparent and accountable, that is respectful, issue-based, representative and cooperative. All those qualities are desirable in a government, in a political party, and so this is what the, uh, the Green Party will, uh, will strive for. Striving for a government that encourages creative industries, generous and sustainable, protecting the weak, and regulating corporate behavior to achieve these ends. So, in many cases, we don't see that in the government today, but this is what the Green Party will strive for. Just want to go over some values that the Green Party holds. These are universal Green Party values, not just for the Green Party here in Canada, but any Green Party worldwide will hold these values. The first value is that of non-violence. And as we heard today, there is, is plenty of violence to go around. The Green Party is very much opposed to that. We strive for peace, cooperation, and non-violence. Somebody told me just recently that peace is that which comes from within, and non-violence is how we treat others. If we establish a principle of non-violence, then we will have peace as a result of that. Sustainability. This is what the Green Party is probably best known for, keeping a sustainable environment, protecting the environment, and maintaining the environment through the use of renewable resources. Social justice which is very much a theme of the cross-cultures as well. Equitable distribution of resources again. Ecological wisdom, well-known Green Party values that uh, we are all part of the natural world which needs to be protected, including, it says here, non-human species. And participatory democracy. Dr. Walsh mentioned this earlier today that nothing will work well unless we have a, an electoral system that actually works to represent the people. And the um, Green Party expects that citizens, voters, will participate in their democracy so that um, good policies get enacted that affects everybody uh, well. And respect for diversity, ecological diversity, biodiversity. We have the six Green Party values here, and you can see from that that really only two of those relate directly to what most people think the Green Party is all about. People will accuse the Green Party of being uh, tree huggers and bunny lovers. Well, we, we have perhaps sustainability there as, as the tree huggers and uh, ecological wisdom for the bunny lovers, but the other four principles really are different from what most people believe that the Green Party is. We have the non-violence, we have the uh, participatory democracy, we have respect for diversity. And so these values are represented in all the policies that the Green Party enacts. So on December 3rd and 4th, we had a special general meeting where um, resolutions that have been proposed by regular Green Party members are brought to the entire membership at large, where the membership gets to vote on those, um, those resolutions, and if they're accepted by the membership, they become Green Party policy. So what you're seeing in the picture here is a, a number of people holding up green cards. There's been some resolution proposed and people are holding up their green cards to indicate that they agree with this issue. If they disagree, they hold up a red card uh, and they can hold up a yellow card if they think that it needs more discussion or, or refinement. Now in this particular case also, you see that uh, there are two um, vote counters at the left side of the picture there. And I'm very happy to say that in all five resolutions that the Green Party passed on indigenous issues, vote counters were not necessary. There was just a, a sea of green cards throughout the room, so all the, green, uh, all the policies passed by consensus, by everybody agreeing that these were good policies to, to have uh, enabled. So let's get to the meat of things. Policy number one is to implement the recommendations from the Royal Commission on Aboriginal Peoples report. Uh, which was uh, released in 1996. 
So that's 21 years ago. And in fact, the Royal Commission started in 1991. So uh, this has been a very long time coming. Somewhat of a comment on how reactive past governments have been on uh, enabling those policies. This is the first Truth and Reconciliation Report that came out 20, 21 years ago. And the Green Party is going to pressure the existing government to um, actually enact those resolutions. Uh, to, to read from a little bit of a preamble here, the Royal Commission on Aboriginal Peoples held 178 days, that's, that's every other day throughout an entire year, of public hearings, visited 96 communities, dozens of experts, and commissioned scores of research studies. And the, volume, the report that they published in 1996 was five volumes long. The Green Party wants uh, those recommendations to be implemented as government policy. Sorry for the wall of text here, but some of these resolutions are, are fairly lengthy. Rebuilding and recognition of original indigenous nations. So the idea here is that indigenous nations throughout Canada, there are many of them, and they've essentially been divided up. But through unity there is strength. If all the nations were to be recognized as a large multi-member nation across Canada, they would have a stronger voice within Canada to uh, meet their needs. And so the Green Party has recommended we recognize indigenous nations as a whole. Specifically at, at the bottom there, uh, it says that these uh, processes should be undertaken by individual communities so that they may share as a whole indig indigenous nationhood. Let me just uh, read from the preamble here as well. The preambles, unfortunately, were not available online any longer. Only at a national level will indigenous peoples have the numbers necessary to exercise a broad governance mandate and develop stable institutions in order to work on a nation-to-nation -nation basis with the government of Canada. This is to put First Nations on an equal footing with the government. Number three, support for indigenous women. Indigenous women are some of the most marginalized members of our community today, both from a, a poverty perspective and just a vulnerability perspective. So this is the resolution that acts directly on the missing and mur murdered indigenous women that uh, people have been pressuring the existing government to, to act on. And this is the, uh, this is the resolution that was passed uh, by the Green Party to make such a thing happen. The preamble says that the worst example of, of healthcare in Canada is for indigenous people. Um, that demographic is more poorly served by Canadian healthcare than, uh, than any other demographic in Canada. Partly that is because Indigenous peoples are a federal responsibility, whereas healthcare is a provincial responsibility. And so both levels of government have, for the last 200 years, been able to pass the buck back and forth, and there is a disproportionate number of First Nations people that lack basic services. And although the Truth and Reconciliation Committee from two years ago called for um, better health care, we in the Green Party don't believe that that's happened yet. And so I want to go back to uh, resolution number four. This is the resolution that really, for the most, piqued my interest. And it, it's, it's fairly benign as it's presented there as a resolution. That the Green Party of Canada renounces and repudiates the doctrine of discovery and calls on the government of Canada to also repudiate and renounce the doctrine of discovery. Which may not be very meaningful unless you know what the uh, doctrine of discovery actually means. And I'd like to read to you from the uh, preamble, the, uh, the whereas clauses that were presented to the special general meeting. The doctrine of discovery is a key premise and basis for non-indigenous government claims to legitimize the sovereignty claims over indigenous lands and territories. The doctrine of discovery was firmly entrenched racist and discriminatory principles of international law that guided the earliest British relations with indigenous peoples, including the Royal Proclamation of 1763, and was used to justify the assumption that all of the land title belonged to the British monarch. European monarchies treated indigenous lands as unoccupied as long as Christians were not present. And so treated indigenous peoples as non-human because they were non-Christian. I find that to be the most offensive thing I have ever read. The racist and discriminatory assumptions of the Doctrine of Discovery were enshrined in the Royal Proclamation of 1763 and the British North America Act and in the Canadian Constitution. 
The acceptance by governments and the assumptions behind the doctrine of discovery have resulted in placing indigenous people into an ongoing position of dependence on colonial governments and courts for the recognition of indigenous rights and title. So as long as this doctrine of discovery continues to exist, Aboriginal peoples will not have title to their own lands. Elements of the doctrine of discovery have been used to rationalize the heinous behavior to indigenous peoples throughout centuries, including forced removals of people from their lands, the seizure of their natural resources, the destruction of that traditional languages and cultures, and the dismantling of their governance structures. When these resolutions were being passed at uh, the Green Party Special General Meeting, it was a practice that the proponents of these resolutions would come up and um, provide explanations uh, defending the, uh, the, the need for these things. People who were advocating for the repudi repudiation of the Doctor of Discovery were in tears when the Green Party accepted this as Green Party policy. It is probably the most important thing that can right some of the wrongs that has been happening um, to Indigenous peoples for the last 150, 200 years. This is Lorraine Reckmans. She is the Indigenous Affairs Critic uh, for the Green Party of Canada, uh, part of the Shadow Cabinet, and she is the author of these five resolutions that are now Green Party policy. So many thanks to uh, Lorraine for having uh, brought these to the attention of uh, the Green Party and many thanks to the membership of the Green Party to, for actually unanimously by consensus, passing all five of these resolutions. Thank you.